that you're um, so entrepreneurial at such a young age. I just cannot wait to see what you what you accomplish. It's going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. You're very welcome. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick break, and we will be back with our second guest. Live a choice where your imagination becomes your reality. If you can imagine it, it's possible. If you can believe it, it's yours. We get it. You're done with the way it is now. You're finished with all the frustration around why you feel stuck and your life isn't working. Imagine what your life would be like if you could have all the answers and see new possibilities. We at Live at Choice choose to make a difference. Live at Choice has developed a proven process and a series of questions that lead participants to the answers they seek, gaining new understanding and self-awareness for both your personal and professional life. If you're ready to get to the life you want, contact us today. Visit liveatchoice.com to get started. Attention entrepreneurs, it's time to get real. Real about who you are, where you want to be, and what you're willing to do to get there. To make the leap from just getting by, to making real money and making a real difference in this world takes a plan and certain skills. If you are serious about building a business that makes a difference in this world, join Michelle Sism at her Legacy Live event in Houston, Texas, September 10th through the 12th. Learn more at LegacyLiveEvent.com. We will see you there. So cool, and I hope you guys want to come to see us in Houston. All right, we are back with our second guest of the show. Jen, are you there? I'm here. I'm excited to get started. Awesome. I am too. Guys, this is Jenna Beatty. And I, did I say that right? Is it Beatty or Beatty? Beatty. It's Beatty. Beatty, yes. I, I missed the A when I looked at it for a second there. I knew I had it wrong. Um, anyway, I want to, um, Jenna, I'm going to tell them your official bio in a little bit. But, um, you know, sometimes when I'm doing radio shows, the guest sends me their book. And so I was so excited, Jana, to get your book in the mail. And I have to tell you that I laughed because um, <laughs> at first I looked at the book and I thought, why did I get this book, right? Because, <laughs> because I read business books. My mother said to me once, probably 20 years ago, she said, you know, most people read for enjoyment. You read for education. You read to grow. And, uh, and so I always read business books. And I t- so Jana wrote this great book with Sharon White and called Quintessential Style, and it is all about that. It's about style, and I thoroughly enjoyed myself. So, <laughs> so I chuckled because you broke the mold of me. I would, you know, I just, I would have looked at it and went, well, that's not a business book, and truly, it actually kind of is. So I was really excited to have you on the show today. And, um, and what I wanted to do, Jenna, is just start by, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read the official bio that you sent, but then I kind of want to hear your side of the story and how you got to where you are. So let me do that first. So uh, Jana loves her clients who have trained her well and is passionate about her life's work. She lives in the heart of Texas, is co-author of Quintessential Style Cultivate and Communicate Your Signature Look. It's a no-nonsense style guide for every woman. Formerly, she worked as an anchor at one of the country's top 100 television stations and has a degree in communications. 30-plus years spent in people's closets taught her that for every challenge, there are multiple solutions. She loves answering questions. People are brilliant, and once we clarify what is really going on, we simply make changes that change our lives, Jenna says. And she also has great credentials. So she's very excited. I'm really excited to have you here, and I have your book right in front of me. So yay. So Jenna, tell us the backstory. What what's what got you to this point? I'm one of the world's first image consultants. I started during the color craze uh, about 1980. Mm-hmm. And it's very interesting. I I found that you can't get people looking good just from the neck down, so my business evolved. But I'm very serious about my uh life and my work and I do not separate them. Most entrepreneurs do not. And Mm -hmm. I liked what you said about reading for self-improvement. I have always tried to hide the fact that that pile of books by my bed (laughs) that are yet to be read are all self-improvement books. I even have joked that, oh, self-improvement books don't work or 
I'd be a lot more improved. <laughs> so I love that you took time to read the book because nonverbal communication is 75 to 95 percent of the message we convey. So it's a really big piece of the business pie. If you have employees, yeah. how they dress, and we'll get into that. But for 25 years, I planned to write a book and I was too busy running a business. So I decided three years ago, okay, I, this is the year, I said to my spouse, I'm either going to write it now or take it off the list. So I went to one more writing class and said, came home and said, announced, I'm not going back to any more classes. It's officially off the list. Six weeks later, I was approached by my friend and professional writer, Sharon White. And I didn't even know she was a professional writer, though we'd been friends for 10 years which was kind of peculiar, and she said, <laughs> we're going to write a book. We're going to write a book because what you have to say is different. And if you whiz through the book, Michelle, you probably noticed some of the things yeah. that we've been taught in this area. I have a little bit of a different take on them. This is about who we are and our personal essence and finding it, not fixing it. Sharon said, you're the most passionate thinker I know. So people have to have this information. And the rest is history. I love it. Yeah, I I agree. I um, as I was going through it, I was like, you, so I could definitely see your um, opinion and approach in here, right? I'm and I'm a big believer. <laughs> yeah, I have no problem with that <laughs> because I am as well. Um, uh, but well, experience you know, gives us opinions. That's and the exactly main thing right. Is I qualify every opinion by why this is relevant to you or why this would not be relevant to you. So I yeah. consider a well-trained professional opinion to be different than off the top of my head reacting to things. That's right. That's exactly right. And and it really shows in the book that that you are that little bit of the out-of-the-box thinker as well, right? I loved um, the, there's a conversation in here about casual Fridays, right? And that opportunity to to you, as you pointed out, I think in the book, that whole kind of do I show up as a slacker on Friday or do I take that attempt to make that much, you know, really make myself stand out and yeah, go bigger and better. Yeah, I called it stand out day. Easy yeah, to stand exactly. out day. So, you know, it's just, it was great to see some of those approaches. So I do, um, you know, I want to look at the different, just some of your viewpoints on, um, you know, where someone should be starting. Thinking about, first of all, Jenna, is that this, our audience, our entrepreneurs, and um, the majority of them aren't working, they're working from home, right? So there's a lot of that going on. Do I even get dressed in the morning conversation? And, um, but then also they're networking, they're speaking, they're on sales, you know, having sales conversations, knee to knee with people in their offices, right? So, we want to look at the conversation from that angle, and um, and I guess we should start with where do they start? What do what do Great. you see is different for them than someone who's Great. going into a nine to five? You may be working at home, but your back is your billboard, and people form an opinion instantly when they see you, and you as an entrepreneur are trying to evoke a certain response and move people to action. Well. You can send that message before you even utter a word. And that is exactly what's important about this. Mm -hmm. So, for example, I have a very, very, very successful client. He's one of the, uh, he is the top person in the country with Redken. And he told me what he loved best about when we've worked together many years ago, uh, We've continued to be friends, of course. But he said, I picked up quickly on the fact that he was all personality, all extrovert, really great at sales. I saw all of his positive traits. But he was such a good guy. He wasn't so hot in collections. So there was a simple fix for this. I designed an outfit for him to wear on collection day. If someone hadn't paid their account... <laughs> He would walk in the door, and when he walked into the door, he would be dressed to collect, I called it. So he happened <laughs> to be calling on stylist, and he called me up the first day he did this. So excited. He said, Jana, 
you have no idea how much this worked. And he called me up the next week or the next month. I guess it was maybe 90 days afterwards. And he says, nobody would ever believe this. When they see me walk through the door in my collection outfit, they move away from their station and toward their checkbook. It's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how we can dress ourselves for success. And there's a lot of debate about dressing up when you're on the phone and doing certain things. And the bottom line is each individual has a marker for this. And as you know, having read the book, everything I talk about is very individual. It was hard for right. me to write a book. I, I focus my information so much for the individual. So you will know how you feel. If you're a person who visually we know there's a socioeconomic rating for every outfit we put on. What I just said is when you put on a certain outfit, you actually take on the qualities and characteristics of that outfit. Now this is important because a lot of these people who are becoming entrepreneurs have done other things. So one of the fastest things you can do to signal your change and get support from those around you who should be supporting you is to change your appearance. You want to dress like the boss. Even if in the beginning you're only the boss of you, you want to be able to have power, authority, credence, and most importantly, confidence. So all of that can be designed. As far as sitting at your desk in the privacy of your home, when are you your best, your sharpest? Are you better comfortable or are you better dressed to the nines? Each individual mm -hmm. knows the answer to that, not by how you look if you aren't going to be seen, but by how you feel. But it is important for those other events, like you said, we're going to network work if we're entrepreneurs. We have to look like, wow, I want some of that. Wow, that person is successful. Wow, I want to get to know them and know their secrets. And you can actually look exactly that way. Love that. And it is the personal style approach to it. So very cool. You know, when, um, and, and so I'm going to take a second and teach everybody something. When Jana sent me her book, she also sent in here a, um, some information on topics and things to talk about, and I love it. The first statement on here says, are all your listeners naked? And I, <laughs> that got my attention. So <laughs> if you're going to be speaking somewhere and you want to send them your book and then send them great information. So there were some topics of interest on here that really got my attention, and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to bring them up and see where she goes with it. The first one was how to look 10% better without spending a dime. Sure. We've just talked about how these people aren't who they used to be. You probably remember in the book how much I talked right. about dressing for who you are today. This is important. Mm -hmm. So I was sitting here having a fun phone conversation, looked out, and after the heat, one of my plants had kind of gotten zapped. And I was, it was with the, the conversation was with a friend. I have a beautiful view from my office. And I walked out and started picking dead leaves off this plant. And I forgot, I got so unwrapped wrapped up in our conversation to walk back in and sat at my desk, and my goodness, it looked like a new plant. Americans think if we own 100 outfits, and Michelle, I expect you to break out laughing because I've seen a lot of your shots and you're in a different outfit in a lot of them. So uh -huh. Americans own more than 100. So follow this math. If someone wanted to look more like an entrepreneur, more successful, more whatever, they get to define the word, and then the clothing is the language they use to support that word, if they went out and bought 10 new outfits based on 100 that they already own, they would expect to look 10% better. By the way, people don't always look better when they buy new outfits. They just get new outfits, so that's one of the things I'm adamant about. If you're going to invest your money, make your wardrobe better and better, not fatter and fatter. So if they didn't have money to do this because they're in transition, what would be just as powerful and maybe even better is eliminating 10 outfits that they shouldn't be wearing that doesn't make them feel powerful or credible or competent or comfortable. If this outfit doesn't serve you or it's who you used to be, not who you desire to become, get rid of it. And so without spending a dime, if you get rid of 10 instead of shopping for 10, you still will look 10% better. I love that.